with the crime fighters in the lead. Fred, Daphne and Velma made their way across the convention hall floor. They snaked around Red van der Boos as they moved towards one of the side entrances. Batman reached for the door. Stay close, he ordered, and do exactly as I say. You bet, Fred replied. Batman pushed open the door, ready for an attack. There was only an empty corridor beyond. Dim emergency lights flickered above as the dark night led the group down the creepy hallway. The corridor was lined with rolling tables and convention supplies, but no zombies. The group silently moved past several empty meeting rooms and through two different junctions where their hallway crisscrossed with others. There was still no sign of their friends, the zombies or any of the other guests. This place is huge, Daphne whispered. We might be searching for days. Batman froze when he reached another junction. He leaned around the corner and spotted zombies smiling around in the hallway. They hovered around a closed meeting room door as if they were guarding it. Velma sneaked a look around the corner. Junkies, she whispered, what are all those zombies doing here? Since when are zombies security guards? Fred asked. We'll take care of them, Batman told the teens as he edged forward. Batgirl pointed at the door near the miling zombies. When it's clear, you can see what's so important in that room. As soon as the crime fighters darted around the corner, the zombies attacked. Batman dodged zero, several blows before grabbing one of the ghouls and flipping him into three others. Bam! Batgirl somersaulted over one zombie and landed behind her. The crime fighter dropped to the floor, sweeping the legs out from under the monster. Whoop! The zombie hit the floor. Then Batgirl leaped off the ground just in time to block attacks from another zombie. As the zombies were driven back, Fred led the way as he, Daphne and Velma dashed up to the closed door. He swung it open and the three of them rushed through. They steered to a stop when they saw what was inside. What's going on? Velma asked. Several convention desks were gathered around a large bulletin board. It was plastered with blurry photos of the Batmobile racing down dark streets. Other dim photos showed a dark figure swinging above the streets or leaping from one building to another. There were photos of a bat signal si shining on the clouds and a close-up of a batarang. The zombies shoved all of us into this room, a man explained. A woman stepped forward with a piece of paper. We were given these instructions. Daphne read the note. If you ever want to leave this room, solve the biggest mystery of all. Who is Batman? Like, let me tell you, Scoop, Shadi said. There's no better place to wait out the zombie apocalypse. He exited the snack bar kitchen with an armload of hamburgers, hot dogs, bags of popcorns, and plates of nachos. Stubidoo licked his lips. Rare. The dog followed him with an equally large armload of snacks. They set their tall piles of food down on the counter before tying napkins around their necks. Shady grinned at Scooby-Doo. Race you to the bottom. Scooby began to drool. On your mark, get set, go. Shady finished. His arms were a blur as he began shoveling food into his mouth. Slurp, chomp, crunch, crunch. Scooby chewed with lightning speed, quickly catching up to his friend. The large piles of food began to dwindle as they gobbled away. 
The specks got smaller and smaller until they revealed something standing on the other side of the counter. Two somethings. Two grumpy zombies. Shadi and Scooby Doo froze in mid bite. Zoinks! Shadi shouted. He trembled with fear. Like you didn't come to the snack bar looking for brains, did you? The zombies growled and loomed closer. No brains here, Scooby Doo added. Shadi laughed nervously. That's right, he said. We're all out of brains. Splat, splat. Shadi and Scooby shoved. Plates of nachos into the monster's faces before running away. The zombies growled with fury as they chased after them. The two friends zigzagged around the vendor booths, trying to loose the zombies any way they could. When they got far enough ahead, they dived into one of the booths and hid there. The zombies ambled by searching for them. When the friends were near, Shadi and Scooby popped out from behind the booth. Let's step right up. We have all the detective supplies right here, Shadi said. First of all, you need official detective hats. Pep, pep. Scooby slapped two Sherlock Holmes hats onto the zombie's head. And how about something for finding clues, Shadi asked as he held a large magnifying glass up to his face. It made his eye look enormous. One zombie was startled by the sight. He jumped back and bumped into the other one. He 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 he, Scooby diddled. And don't forget the fingerprinting powder, Shadi added. Poof, Scooby Doo dumped a large container of powder all over the zombies. Then he and Shadi sprinted away, leaving the monsters in a black cloud. Like snack time's over, Shadi said as they ran. We better find the others. Yeah, Scooby agreed. Shadi steadied to a halt. But not that way, their paws were blocked by six zombies. Scooby tapped Shadi on the shoulder. Not that way either. Shadi turned to see six more zombies behind them. They were surrounded. Shadi and Scooby hugged each other and trembled as the creepy monsters shambled closer and closer.